Hello, I'm Lanyon Curtin-Hole, and it's been my pleasure to have maintained Cisco Espresso Central, a FIEMA E98 President espresso machine that was brought to Cisco by uh, Mario and Luca, put into my care when they left, and in the same tradition uh, that I am leaving Cisco on, on 2020, November 30th, I am turning it over to the care of a team consisting of Maxine, Giancarlo and Margaret. Today, I'm going to show how you clean the espresso machine. The espresso machine is a food processor for putting, putting up product, um, cafe. And just like your blender at home or mixing bowl or anything like that, you would clean, need to clean those on a regular basis. This is no different. Cleaning is going to ensure both health and safety as well as to produce a great tasting espresso. One of the secrets of this machine is it's regularly cleaned and maintained. Now, cleaning is not a big process. It's a fairly straightforward process. I'm going to show you these steps. The parts and supplies for cleaning are in the coffee bowl, which is Cisco Building 2, second floor, room 224. So I brought those things with me and they consist of this particular box of parts, bag of a couple of parts of seals and paper seals, and scouring powder. There's an item which stays here on the machine, and it's this thing that says for cleaning only, this is a portafilter, backslash portafilter with no holes in it. Now, I'm gonna go over the parts that we have here in this part of cleaning. One of the parts is a piece of cardboard where there's actually a needle, and the needle's poked into the cardboard so that it has a minimum of sticking one's fingers. There are also parts such as scrub brushes here, a spoon for ladling out scouring powder, spare gaskets and uh, paper seals, so a, uh, a spare gasket head and scouring powder. There's spare cans of this scouring powder in the boxes below the table where these things sit. So the first thing you want to do is to use the needle in it's, it's a pull out of the cargo box and you're going to, need to use the needle and poke it into the various holes of the steamers. Some people don't do a good job of cleaning it, and so what you need to do is basically poke the needle into the, into the holes. That one has four, this one has five, and when you're poking the needle in to, to get it through if there's any sort of gunk, take the needle and pull around in a circular fashion try to basically scour out the edges of the hole. Now when you do that, sometimes you push material up into the wall uh, steamer, so you want to Blast it back out again. And there you can see if there's anything clogged in, and then do a final check to be sure that essentially the blasting out has not replugged the steam. But in this case, they are were cleaned a couple of days ago, so they should be relatively clean. And again, it's a fairly quick process, but that's going to prevent steamed milk buildup from clogging the holes. The next process you want to do is to inspect the gasket head and to clean it. And so what I recommend using is the single uh, portafilter block because this nice little hook is a really nice handy tool for catching the rim of the gasket head and pulling it down. So I basically go under here and catch the rim and essentially flick it down. So I'm, I'm doing sort of this kind of a process and the result is the gasket head is pulled up. Now, there are three parts to it. There is the actual, there's actual mesh. You can get spare ones from uh, espresso parts. They're at 228 in E. And also in here is a rubber seal and a, a paper shim. You want to pull the rubber shield and move it around to see if it's, if it's still relatively pliable. You also want to look to see if there's any cracks in it. There's no cracks in it because it was just replaced two days ago. But nevertheless, you want to check it if, there's, if, it's, if it begins to get stiff or if there's any cracks whatsoever, it's time to replace it. The reason particularly it's important because if there's small cracks in it, pressure leaks out through those cracks 
and, and also even more worse, profit grounds can come through that crack as well. The result is it's harder to pull a shot and you start to get gunk in it. So if there's a unique sort of crack at all, uh, replace it. Crystal so parts again is the one that has these units. Uh, their F60 is the model for these. But this one being good, it's time to put, put it back in. So you're going to place the paper seal on it. And again, if, if, you, if the paper seal looks pretty warm, we have a whole stack of these things that are also my espresso parts that you can replace it with. But we're gonna put the stack on top of here and then poke it through. So the result is that the paper stack is on the top and the gasket's on the bottom. This gasket is what the porter filter locks and jams into and forms the seal. The paper is above. To put it back in, use your back flush tool and simply mount it onto the back flush tool and insert it like you would be pulling a shot of espresso. And then crank it in and that will ensure that that unit is now up in place. The final thing which you need to do is the actual back flush process. Now we use this special part scouring powder. And uh, by the way, there are several spare ones of these in the boxes below the table inside the coffee vault room. And we basically take our back flush unit and we put in, I would say about two thirds of a, uh, of, of, of amount of this. I mean, but basically about, about that amount. Not full, not heaping, maybe about two thirds there, so you get about that much material into the unit. And what you're going to do is put this into place, and we're going to turn it on. It's going to build up pressure, it's going to force the material back in. It will turn on for 10 seconds, a count of 10, and then we'll stop, and then you'll hear this sort of surge coming out and you'll see the gunk starting to come out on, onto here. So I'm going to turn it on for 10 seconds. One, two, three, ten. You hear that? See, that's the first sort of set. And you'll see in the sink some of the material coming out. Now, we had cleaned it a couple of days ago. It has a brand new aspirator, so it's not that dirty. Letting it sit for a little bit. And then you take the unit and you release it and put it back again. And then another 10 seconds. Notice the second time, to see how much material came out of it, how black it was. That's the back flushing working its way through. And it didn't do a, a sort of discharge set. So we're going to release it, put it back again, and do another 10 seconds. I guess it's not quite 10 seconds, for a count of 10 minutes. And you'll see again that there's some suds as well as, as uh, gritty material, and that's the stuff that's being scoured out through the inside of the machine. You wait a count of 10, and, whoops, and then do it again. Or you release it, put it back in, and 10 seconds. Or as you see, a count of 10, it's not really 10 seconds. Release, let it come out. Part of the purpose of releasing the pressure opening up and back in as it forces the unit to re reacquire the pressure and forces it back up. Rather than just maintaining pressure inside the unit, it allows the water to, to, to come in before the full pressure builds up. So we do another, another count of 10 and release. Now we're seeing that there's not as much material coming out, not as much suds, not as much grit. That's telling us we're getting close to being finished. Another release, pack, and another count of 10. So when this one came out, I, I saw almost no brown specks um, suggesting that this unit now has done the scouring. In the first time you saw the discharge noise, the second one you saw a lot of the black stuff go through, out, out the hole. Through a couple more rounds, you see this now relatively clean. So we finished the scouring phase, and you, what you will do is you'll do those, you know, uh, release, hold, count, press, turn on for a count of 10, stop, let it discharge. You'll do that until the discharge comes out is relatively clean in the sink. Having achieved that, we now go and, and dump. And you'll see there's a, still a little bit of scouring material here, but a lot of it's been used. We just dump that out. The final thing you want to do is to rinse it. 
And rinsing it simply is having a porter filter with no guardings in it, and you simply put it into the unit again and pressure it for a count of 10. And you see the, you heard the, the discharge sound and there's some suds on here. What we're going to be doing, and again, here, what I, I, I release it, put it back in and go for a count of 10. What you want to look for is rinses that occur with no suds. That's going to essentially ensure that the next person who pulls the shot of espresso is not going to get a, basically a soapy unit. You know, so release, put back. There's just a little bit of size here, but almost, we're almost done. So we'll do another set. Release, pull, discharge. That looks pretty clean. So we're done. I recommend leaving the porter filter up on the unit, but put it back in the corner so that people don't confuse it with the single double brush box. Some people like to do back flushes themselves, so that's fine. You're doing the important one, which is doing the back flush with this set. So again, the process was to use the needle to poke through these things, sort of scouring them out, blowing them, doing another poke, then using a single unit port filter to pop out the gasket, inspect it, replace the gasket if necessary. And when you replace the gasket, I recommend you also replace the paper filter. Then you use the brush to go and brush the material. Then use the unit to push it back in. Having done that, use two thirds of a plastic tablespoon of all the soap here, push it back in, pressure it for a count of 10, stop, release, notice the discharge, release, put it back in again, doing that cycles of those counts of 10 with the, with the scouring powder in the bottom um, until the discharge is free of brown and black flux. Then dump out the material and use the back flush by itself to do counts of 10 releases. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the grinders. Them. There's another one of these containers in the coffee storeroom and it has two tools that you may need to use in emergency. If someone were to really screw up the grinder and put in really bad beans, first of all, as I mentioned before, take some of the rice and maybe like put a hundred milliliters to 200 milliliters of, of rice in it and try to grind the rice through the grinder. The rice will absorb some of the oils and may help you scour it out. But if not, then you're gonna to need to open up the grinder. First thing you're gonna do is to go back here and convert, take this open and turn it to closed. Then you basically twist this to the side and pull it up. Now, you see the three bars there, three tabs? Well, this is a three tab set and it fits over on top of it. And you'll notice there is a direction for unlock and direction for lock. And if you unlock it, spin it, you can actually then completely unscrew that and pull it up and take a brush and brush it out and put it back in. You'll need to recalibrate the grinder if you do that. So hopefully they don't do something like that. In extreme cases, when either the burrs are wearing down or someone has really messed it up, you may need to do the internal course adjustments. To do that, you take and pull this guy out and it's a little bit hard to see in the phone, but under here about this location, there's a hole. And this tool, which is used to go up inside her. So I will fit it into the position where you have to kind of feel where the hole is. It's a small hole. And that's about where the hole is back in there. And you notice that it has a direction. It says either finer or coarser. So if you turn it this way, it will bring the place together. And you do it this way, other way, it will pull them apart. So I leave this inside here, upside down. There's, there's two of those tools, um, just in case you need to get back to the grinder. Hopefully people won't mess it up, but you never know. Sometimes engineers can't leave things alone. So this thing here, twist back, you, you twist it back and it clicks. There's a basically an interlock. And then of course you want to take it from closed to open. And then this thing snaps back into place. There you go. It's not smack into place. I had to make some adjustments on the grinds. So decaf is now A2 and the caffeinated is now A2. 
The caffeine thing is actually, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. I think it's dialed in pretty well. The decaf single is okay. The double's a little bit runny, but it's decaf, so maybe that's okay. Maybe you can adjust it better. I also changed the time. So on decaf, one is 6.5, two is 8.0, three is 0.4. That's a little bit extra. On the case for the caffeinated, one is 6.5, two is 8.5, and three is 0.4. So that's the grinders. Hopefully they will give you a good service. As I mentioned before, there are some spare grinders and spare parts in uh, boxes in the computer storeroom. Actually, the, excuse me, the coffee vault. Building two, second floor, room 224. PS on the grinder. One thing that's important is that if you do need to change these, don't change it while the grinder is off. Go to manual, start, and let it start grinding and then slowly adjust these units. What it's doing is it's changing the very fine or semi-fine the distance between the two burr grinders. If there's beans in there and you try to push these levers, you'll basically risk bending or jamming the system. So always, if you're going to have to adjust these, go onto manual, click start, having it start to pour out, and while it's grinding, then make slow adjustments to it. Another thing that I would also suggest with these units is that if you do need to change the change the value what you do is you go to a setting like this because if you, if you go here and use this up or down that temporarily changes it but by the time you come back it's the same thing so in order to make it permanent let's say if we want to change it down to here you then go and press and hold and it blinks and now it records it i'll set it back to 6.5 Press and hold, and that's how you adjust those units. I would also mention something about the maintenance of the sink. The tube goes into the sink, and so the grounds go in here, but you need to, every once in a while, be sure that you run the disposal. And I also recommend cleaning out with soap so that you don't get bad orders. Some people just put their lunch down there and they don't even know, they don't know where the, uh, the switch is and so you get gunk piled up. If you don't do the cleaning, then the sink will clog with coffee grounds and you'll have a mess in your hands. So what you do is you take the sink and turn it on and have it go basically into both sides, hot water into both sides. Once hot water is there, you come over here to turn on the switch. Now, if there's stuff grinding inside, let it grind through, and then take your soap and give it a couple of good squirts into the set. And you'll see it starts, it'll start the foam. Put a couple of squirts on this side, a couple of squirts on that side, this side. Um, let the busy the grinder inside, the, the soda grinder, um, help wash out the, the set. Wait until it comes clean. If, if there's material in there, it actually might back up and you might get soaps coming up subs into the sink. It won't overflow, but once you're at the stage where it's back to normal and you're not hearing the soap drying, then turn off the switch and then turn off the water. Don't run the switch disposal without water running through here. But if you do that, maybe once a week or so, you'll ensure that the grinds that go in there and whatever else people put in there will remain in a functional state. So we have three filters. The first part is this valve here, which is where it comes in from the Cisco water supply. When it's like this in line, it means the water is flowing. If you turn it a quarter turn that way, they'll shut it off. So if you ever need to stop the water because of some big leak, this is where you can stop it here. It'll still go to the sink and other units, but this one will stop it going to the espresso machine. So this line goes around and comes down to this gauge here. Now, I don't recommend touching this thing because you can cause it to leak out here. So I'll just show you down here. This is the gauge showing you the pressure coming from Cisco. Right now it reads at 42. Then it goes into this unit here. This is the, um, the coarse grain filter. It operates at 10 microns. It comes out and into this unit here, which is the decalcifier. And then this goes into this last one here, which is a one micron filter. You'll notice that there is a valve here. It reads there at 33. 
and a valve here that reads at 32. We go from 40, 42 to 33 to about 32. This valve is on the other side of this filtration system, so you'll get some pressure drop. When you go from 42 down to maybe when it gets into the near the 20 range, that's when this is clogged enough that you need to replace it. If you have low water pressure, then this dial can become low. So the better way than saying it's in the replace zone is to say, well, you typically have a 10 difference between this side and this side. When that difference gets out to 20, then this filter needs to be replaced. Then you have the next filter, the next pressure gauge you have is up there, and that's the last stage, and that shows at 33. So this is showing the pressure drop through this unit and this unit. What's happening here is that this 10 micron coarse grain filter is used to catch the gross particulates that come through the water supply, especially when they change the water supply from well water to hetch hetchy twice a year depending on, on the season. And when they do that change there, or they do a flush of lines, you get lots of particulates coming out. And so this is the coarse thing that will catch those coarse units. This here removes a lot of the calcium and minerals. If you don't have this unit, then up there, this will begin to calcify and you'll get all kinds of mineral deposits and you get lots of problems in the unit. So this is the main job. We have this in front of it because this is about $150 unit. This is probably about a $20 unit. So we have a $20 unit to catch the gross particulates that then this thing, so you don't fill this thing up with line junk. This is job is to remove the calcium out of the water as much as it can. And then this job here is to catch what this one emits because this decalcifier will send some material down the line. And so this one micron fine filter is they are necessary to catch this. So this is to catch the stuff from the, from the water. This is to remove the calcium and this is to catch the stuff from the calcium filter. And again, you typically take this gauge to this gauge should not be more than 20. Right now it's about 10. And then from this gauge to this gauge should not be more than five or so. If either of these get down to the 20 range, that's also probably a time to replace. Replacing has to do with a unit to get the folks to pull them in and out. You can buy these units from the supplier that I that indicate in the instruction manual. I forget the name of them right now, but they're in the instruction manual and that should be the case. My suggestion in again is don't move these around because you'll risk springing a leak here. It's best just to leave it the way it is. And if you do need to shut off things, you have this valve or you have this valve or you have that valve or that valve to work with. Best wishes. I'd like to also do a PS inside the coffee vault. Of course, we have cans, a regular. You might notice that the decafs are in two different forms. This is the old form that was for three kilograms, like those down there. The new beans come in one and a half kilos. And the reason why is that the decaf is used a lot less. And if you have a large block like that, the beans air out and dry out. So we're they're moving to giving us two of the one and a half kilo sets when you order one of these. You know, boxes come in pairs of the regular. They'll come with four of these in a box. There are two boxes in a carton. Also, another thing as well is the inventory. And this is necessary to maintain to show what we've done with these expensive cans of beans. They go back all the way to the beginning there with the original signatures and the many people interns that work on it. So right now we're at 356 here and number um, number 40. You have sort of of, of signing in when, when you receive them. And when you take them out to the outside, then sign it and or date and time going out. You know, my suggestion is just to print more of these when we when you sort of run out and use the paper thing. This is for inventory stuff. They, they uh, people doing the assets and so forth said, rather than putting on those RFID tags, if we merely have the ability to be audited, then we can show what happened. So that's why we number the cans here when, when we unbox them put the date in and the date out so we can show that they were used. As well, you have items to show the cleaning stuff. There is, a, of course, a scouring powder. There's the thing like the spoon, the scrubbing. You probably need a new scrubber. At this point, that's getting a little bit old. And, of course, the piece of cardboard with a, with a needle in it for cleaning. There's some spare gaskets and seals. There's also a bag of various uh, porter filters. This is the one which fits in the unit well. You 
I might be replacing these every couple months. Um, this one maybe every couple years. There's also rice here. The reason why we have rice is should someone be so fortunate as to take beans that are not oily beans, but some oily bean, you'll find that the grinders will clog themselves up. And part of the unclogging process is to take a bunch of rice, 100 milliliters, 200 milliliters, somewhere around there, maybe 150, put the rice into the grinder and grind the rice. That the rice will absorb some of the oil and help you sort of unjam the thing uh, as necessary. Should you run into problems with the grinders? We have a couple of older grinders here and you'll see inside the state of the grinder, such as this box here says, open it up, it says uh, grinder, okay, but use condition. So this is an example when there was a time where we had to replace both, replace a grinder, we bought both, bought two of them. And so this is a relatively good spare. So if one of the grinders breaks down, you can put one of those in. There's a couple others that are in, in lesser conditions. And so they are uh, out. These cans back here are empty. They happen to be the old historic cans. Used to be with flat stuff. These are really nice for drums. Um, some people like their drums. So if you find somebody who wants to get some cans, uh, for a school project and give them those historic ones because those actually have much better sound. Down here, there are a couple of boxes. The box, this box of cups and plates is really a set of, of dishwater plates we don't really use that much. This other box is probably more useful. Among things, it contains a spare one of these front units. It also has several of these hoppers. Um, if someone breaks one of the plastic top there because they, they don't read the thing of don't remove it, you have a spare hopper here. Also, see down inside, there are so, some more of those scouring uh, uh, units. So again, you'll find a couple of these nice items for your maintenance that are left under here. So that's it. Enjoy the coffee vault. Those bags there are emergency earthquake supplies. So if you happen to be here and you need some emergency supplies and stuff, you got a couple inside here if you can get to this spot. So I hope that a number of people volunteer to help the team of Maxine, Giancarlo, and Margaret maintain and clean this machine. And if you do so, and you use Mr. Espresso once a year to come do service checks or repairs as necessary, this machine Will, will last for, for many decades and you will provide an excellent espresso to the business unit. So thank you very much and best wishes.